Hi, I'm Professor Jones, and in this video, I'm going to go through a hypothesis test for the mean when sigma is unknown. Okay, and I'll talk about why this problem fits that case as well. Okay, so here we've got our problem. Um, we're looking at a runner's average time, and last month, uh, her average time for a 5K was 32.4 minutes. Okay, and you know how this is like you you start to run. I don't know how it is because I don't do any running, but uh, maybe you have this in another area. Where you're like, okay, I feel like I'm starting to get better. I feel like this month that I may have had some of these runs that are a little bit longer than the 32.4, but most of them are falling below, and I feel like I'm improving, and that this month my average is going to get better. And so that's the question that she's asking here: is that there is is this so, you know, enough of an improvement so far to be able to say, um, I'm improving this month, okay? So I have 10 data points here, so 10 runs from this month, um, and she's asking with a 0 0.05 level of significance, can we say that she is improving this average, okay? Um, and so I, with my students, I have a little card that we use that walks through the procedures, just the steps to the hypothesis testing, and I'll try to put a picture of it um, either in the description or the comments for you so that you can kind of see those steps, or I can write it out, type it out, um, see those steps that I'm going through for hypothesis testing. And the first step is that we need to, in the context of this application of this problem, we need to state the null and the alternative hypothesis, okay, and also set the level of significance. So this is step one. I'm going to kind of label these as I go through, and I will have those steps for you, okay? So we're looking for the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and we use an h sub 0 and an h sub 1. And I have also seen this as an h sub a, okay? So either way, null and alternative hypothesis. The null is what is understood to be true, okay? And so the null in this case would be um, what the average currently is, okay? And her average is this 32.4. So the null is always a mu, for, for the mean, um, in this case, this type of problem, it's the mu equals, okay? So it doesn't use any less than or greater than. And another mistake that I see often is just a student writing null hypothesis 32.4. 32.4 is what? I need to know what measure it is. And so in this case, we are testing the mean. We can do this for other measures, other statistics and parameters. And so make sure that you do specify that it's the mean that we are saying is 32.4 for now. And then the alternative hypothesis is what we're we're changing, okay? So do we think this is decreasing or increasing, or is it just not equal to? And in her case, she's wanting to improve on this time. She's saying that she thinks her time is improving. And so for a runner, that would be less. We would be in less time. And so we would say mu is less than this 32.4. And at the end, we are either going to reject the null in favor of the alternative, or we are going to not have enough evidence to reject the null and have to say that mu is equal to this 32.4. So those are our only two options, is either to be in favor of this time or not have enough evidence and have to stick with this mu equals 32.4. Okay. And then we also want to state the level of significance here. Um, she does say that she wants to be able to say this with a 0 0.05 level of significance. That's a common level of significance. We denote it with an alpha, a small alpha, Greek letter. We're using 0 0.05 or 5%, okay? All right, the next step is we're going to find t. We're going to compute our t. So this is sigma unknown, so we're using the student t distribution, and we're using um, s instead of sigma, the standard deviation of this data set. Okay, so we need for t, we need um, x bar, s, and n from the sample, and mu from the alternative, excuse me, from the null hypothesis. Okay, so I'll just give you this formula, t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. 
Okay, so we need these pieces, X bar, mu, S, and N. And mu comes from the null hypothesis here. X bar and S and N come from the data set. So put this data set into Excel or into your calculator and have those, that technology compute X bar, S, and then N is just the number of data points that we have, and we have 10. So we can get that. And then I found X bar. I used a calculator um, to find that, as well as sigma. Excuse me, S. That is S, standard deviation of the sample. Make sure you're using a sample standard deviation formula for S. Okay, so there's those two pieces, and then we just plug it in. Okay, when you do that, you should get a negative 0.747. Okay, that's just plugging these values into this formula. All right, so the third step is going to be different depending on if you're using technology um, or if you are using a chart. My students use a chart for this. Uh, you can also do an Excel. You can also do it in the graphing calculator. And so if you are interested in um, trying to find out how to do it in Excel or a graphing calculator, you can usually just Google. And I say in the description like some things that you can Google in order to find this. And so step three is to use the student's t-distribution and the type of test, whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. Ours is one-tailed, and that's all determined by the, um, the value right here, the, the notation, what is this, the symbol right here, okay, for whether it's a less than or greater than. Those are both one-tailed. We can also see a not equal to sign there, so an equal sign with a line through it. And when we do that, we're actually looking at both sides, so it's a two-tailed. So we need to know that if we're using the distribution, and we're going to use that to find or estimate, and we are going to be estimating the p-value corresponding to the test statistic. Okay, so this is hard to do without the table in front of me, but what you're doing is you're looking at your degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom is n minus 1. It's n minus 1 for the mean. So that's 9, and you're looking at that t-distribution test chart and you are looking at a degrees of freedom 9, and then you're comparing your absolute value of this, so just the 0 0.747, drop the negative. It's negative because it's a less than, okay? And you're comparing it to those values in a degrees of freedom of 9. And when you find out where it is, so for us, if you're looking at that chart, our absolute value of t is landing in between um, 0.703 and 1.23. Now these numbers aren't important, so you don't need to write them down or anything. They're just me trying to help you read that chart. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the absolute value of t, 0.747, and I'm figuring out where it's lying in between in the degrees of freedom of 9. So my t is landing in between these two values, these are values on the chart. And again, they don't matter except for just trying to figure out where that t is, okay? And so since my t value lies in between these two values, I can look up <laughs> all the way up at the top of the chart at the one-tailed areas, okay, corresponding to these two values. And that's how I find where my p is in between. And so because, um, this, I believe, corresponds to 0.25, and this one corresponds to 0.125. My p is in between those two values. So that, I'm going to write it in the right order here, though. So using the chart, okay. So my p is in between these two values. This is the probability. So this is what p is and how we're kind of doing this test. p is the probability that if this was actually the average, that I would be able to collect this data and it would yield this mean and standard deviation. Okay, I'll say that again. It is the probability that 
this is the mean um, that I would be able to collect this data with this particular mean and standard deviation that's that far from the mean. So our mean, you know, is 32.2 of this data, which is not very far off this 32.4. So the question is, is like, is that enough to say that my time is improving in this run? Um, and so the probability that I would be able to collect this data and, um, and, it, and this be the mean is between 12.5% uh, and 25%, which is pretty high. And so what that's saying is that the probability is pretty high that I would be able to do this and the mean is actually this, okay? I would be able to collect 10 data points and the mean be 32.24 when the actual mean mu, the mean of the population, is the 32.4. So that is what P is. And we are comparing it to the level of significance. So we've set that before we compute P, before we compute X bar and S even. And our, we wanted it to be 5% in order to reject the null. And it is not. It is between 12.5 and 25%. And so in this case, we do not have enough evidence to reject the null. Okay. So step four, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but step four is to conclude the test. And it says that if the p-value is less than alpha, which is the level of significance, then we reject the null hypothesis. That means that it's really small and the probability is tiny and we can say, okay, this probability is pretty small that this would actually happen, so this must not really be the mean, okay? And then if it's greater than alpha, which that's what ours is, we don't have enough evidence to reject the null. And then finally, our last step is to interpret the conclusion in the context of the application. So I'm going to kind of do that. I'll put it right here um, for, this, for this problem, okay? So we don't have enough evidence to reject the null. Okay, and cannot say that her time is improving. At this level of significance. Okay, I moved over here so you can read this a little bit better, but again, not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and we cannot say that her time is improving at this 0 0.05 level of significance. If we had set a different level of significance, you know, something that is, <laughs> this would be less than, um, or if we had some times and maybe got this average right here, the average of the sample a little bit lower, we might have um, enough evidence. And maybe as she completes more runs this month, then she can do this again and perhaps have enough evidence to reject the null. But for now, we do not have enough evidence. This hypothesis test, um, I don't want to say failed, but it would let us know that she is not improving enough to say so at this point. All right, well, I hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, then feel free to comment below. I'm going to try to do some more hypothesis testing videos. It is a difficult concept, and different problems have different things that are difficult about them. Um, but if you have anything else you would like to see, then feel, also feel free to comment below, like this video, subscribe to my channel. That's helpful to me, and I hope to see you in another video.